Hello everyone, I'm Adam Steele from EVO and this is a video where I'm going to help you set your EVO 4, EVO 8 or EVO 16 up with your DAW. Today, we're going to be covering Pro Tools. First things first, we're going to want to plug in our interface. If it's an EVO 4 or EVO 8, we're going to want to plug the USB-C connection straight into our Mac or PC. If we're using a Mac, it's likely going to be a USB-C to C cable. If it's a PC, it's likely to be a USB-C to A cable. Both work exactly the same, provide exactly the same sound quality. It just depends which end works with your machine. Next, we're going to look at drivers. Whilst it is true that many Macs and PCs will work to some extent with an Evo interface without any extra software, we highly recommend that you get the drivers from the Evo website. These will give you the best functionality, the most performance with your DAW, and the best overall experience. So head to evo.audio in your browser. So here we are at the evo.audio website, and we're going to go to the top to products, and select the audio interface from here that is exactly the one that you own. In my case here, it's the Evo 4. Head down the page a little bit and we will see a Downloads tab. Give this a click. And we bring up a page with the documents, including the manuals if you want to read in detail, and also the drivers at the bottom of the page for Mac and Windows. Select the one that is relevant to you, get that downloaded and install that on your computer, and I'll see you back here shortly. Once the Evo app is installed on your computer, you will now have this running in the top right corner on Mac OS and in the bottom right on Windows with the letter E. If we give that a click, then we can click show Evo control or to show the mixer for the Evo 8 and Evo 16. The Evo control for the Evo 4 is a nice way to look at exactly the same features that are available on the front of the hardware. With the Evo 8 and 16, the Evo mixer will give you some more control over the more fine aspects that we will cover later on. The first thing that I'm going to do to get sound is plug in a microphone. I'm going to plug this into input one on the Evo 4. This process is the same on the Evo 8 and Evo 16. I've plugged in this vocal microphone and it needs two things. It needs power and it needs gain. So what we're going to do is press the number one, which selects channel one. And then first thing I need for this is phantom power. So I'm now going to hit the 48V button for phantom power. And that means this microphone, given a couple of seconds, is now powered. The next thing it needs is gain. And we have two choices there. Either we can do that by hitting number one and then manually selecting the amount of gain that we need from the large knob on the front of the Evo interface, or we can use the smart gain feature. Check out smart gain in the manual and on some of the other videos here. Now we've got our microphone plugged in and ready, it's time to fire up Pro Tools. From the Pro Tools dashboard, we're going to go to create at the top and then put our name in, which I'm going to call this Evo 4 because that's what I'm using and we're not going to use a template in this case because I'm going to walk you through what we're doing. And so the location is in the documents folder here, but that can be wherever you like it to be. And I'm going to hit create. And this brings us up a fairly standard blank Pro Tools session. From here, we need to configure Pro Tools so that it knows to use the Evo interface. So we're going to go into setup and playback engine. So at the top, we've got device and playback engine, which we're going to change to be Evo 4. And it says it's automatically going to save and close the session. Do we want to proceed? Yes, we do. The other thing that we need to set here is the hardware buffer size. Now that can be related to latency. If we monitor a track in Pro Tools, which means that we can hear any processing that's being done to it, any EQs, any compressors, that has to go through Pro Tools, and so there is a very slight delay while it processes it. And the buffer determines how long it takes. So if you're quite sensitive to that delay, you may want this to be quite a small value. I personally go for 128 samples, although 64 might also work for you. But do be aware that either on older machines or if you've got a very heavy and busy mix going, this may cause issues like dropouts and stops in Pro Tools because the machine's struggling to cope. So if you're getting to a busy mix and you're no longer recording, you may want to change this to be more like 512 or 1024 samples. 
Now we fit OK on that, that has opened up our project again and we can make a new track here. So if we go to track new, we can create one new audio track in samples and I'm going to call that mic one and hit create. And there it is. So if we want to get this recording in Pro Tools, we hit this little record icon here. And now because our microphone level is set, we can see the level coming in in Pro Tools. But if you've been following this to the letter, you won't be hearing anything yet at this point because we've not talked about monitoring. So at this point, your headphones or speakers may not be plugged in or turned on. So do that now, turn them on, and then we're going to get to the volume control in the front of the Evo. We're going to click that and then turn up the encoder, the rotary knob, until we have as much level as we desire. Personally, I tend to start with this relatively low and then bring it up as needed rather than it being too loud and causing us audio issues. And now you may still not be hearing anything because we're going to be talking about monitoring. So next to that record button that we touched earlier, which is now flashing, there is a button that's I, and that is for track input monitoring. If we click that, we're now going to be hearing our audio through Pro Tools. If there's anything like an EQ or a compressor on that channel, you will then hear them. Alternatively, if we unselect that, we can now go to the Evo Control, which shows us what's going on, or alternatively, the Evo Mixer. In Evo Control, we're going to click on this little faders button, which is also the same on the Evo 4 itself. So we're going to click that. And then as I move that encoder, you will see that white light moving from left to right. All the way on the left, you will be hearing input monitoring, which means that you will hear only input one and two coming through your headphones or your monitors all the way to the right. And you will only hear the audio coming from Pro Tools. If this is halfway in between, you'll hear an equal mix of both. And then if you move that to the left or the right, you will hear more of the input monitoring or Pro Tools respectively. At this point, you may be coming across an issue that I like to call ghosting, where you can hear a kind of a delayed version of the audio. So it sounds like a chorusing or doubling effect. What's happening here is that there are two types of monitoring happening at once. So the near zero latency monitoring from the Evo 4 will be coming through and that will happen when the input monitoring is also engaged in Pro Tools. So at this point, we need to make a choice. Either we turn on the Evo 4, the monitoring all the way to the right, so it's Pro Tools only, and select the input monitoring in Pro Tools, or on the Evo mixer, we make sure that the faders on each individual channel are down. Alternatively, we turn off input monitoring in Pro Tools, and then use the input monitoring balance on the Evo 4 or turn up the faders on the Evo mixer to the level that suits us. And that's it. So if there's anything else that you'd like us to answer for you, please feel free to leave a comment down below in the comments section. Otherwise, if there's anything else you still need, feel free to talk to us at our support. Thanks everybody for watching. Good luck and have fun and we'll see you soon.